She left home for a while. And after she left, very quickly, everything changed. The water seemed more tepid than I remembered it being, and the coffee seemed grey. And my hair grew, and I spent all my time watching documentaries on my television and eating biscuits. I ate so many biscuits. The windows grew dirty, and the music seemed dull. And I couldn't listen to the news because it made my heart freeze and my fingers hurt. I tried to do some exercise because at least nobody was watching. The cat became resentful. I watched a surprising amount of old football matches on the internet. I went out for bike rides in the sunshine in the strangely quiet city and noticed how everybody seemed more frightened than they seemed before. Nothing worked. The small amount of baking I did, my attempts to pick up my old violin and try and play a tune. The phone calls that old friends made from different international cities None of them had seen her either. And then, today, I started to think about this home that she left. Really look at it. I found myself daydreaming, drifting in and out of consciousness, trying perhaps to figure out what it was, this home place. I mean, home is not where I mop the floors. Home is not a place where I keep my toothbrush. It's not a place where I sleep on my dog or read books or stare into the internet looking for bursts of distraction. It is not a place to store jam, or eat apples, or grill bacon, or make risotto. And it is not a good place to hit our heads against the wall when the world starts to hurt. It is not a place of old boxes and mixed tapes and seven-inch vinyl records. I mean, home is not a place for computer screens or photographs of writers I admire, or a place to sleep or wash or keep hand soap and hand cream and keep the windows open and listen to the birds. It is not a place to eat Easter eggs. And 80 years ago, it wasn't a place to hide from the bomb fall. And 200 years ago, it wasn't a corner of a field on a farm. It hasn't been a place to set out on the road to Colchester or find sanctuary from the Black Death or smallpox or typhoid or cholera. It is not a place on the east end of the north banks of the ancient estuary breathing inwards and outwards from the mouth of the North Sea. Or a place near the forests where the Iguanodon crawled and where tribes sheltered for centuries and where gangsters buried bodies and where uh, nowadays you can find a really lovely pub lunch. It is not a point on the surface of a rotating sphere, orbiting a ferocious sun, orbiting a galactic core in an expanding universe. It is, rather, the gaps between all of these things and the spaces 
that they make and the way I would try to move in those spaces and feel with my fingers and taste with my tongue and watch as closely as I could or listen my hardest to hear for the day that will come. It will come because these days do come. When I notice the dog stand to attention and I hear the gate creak and I hear her key in the door. She'll come home.